So, what shall we talk about today? Should we talk about how I'm a Gemini? You know what that means. Tell me what that means. Or that I am part man, part machine. Earth of might, I am like Darth Vader. Am I Darth Vader? Nah, man. We're here to talk about games. Mad Mikey Gaming. G'day all you mad gamers out there. Mad Mikey with Getting to Know Mad Mikey Mondays. The show where I just talk a bit about myself and what made me the gamer I am today. And funnily enough, today the game show is going to be about the top games that have influenced me through my life. Don't forget guys, if you like what you see, not the goods, but what we're actually talking about here, give us a thumbs up, uh, share, and comment below on the games that actually introduced you to gaming and shaped you into the gamer that you are today. So the first one might be a bit of a surprise to a lot of you guys, but it was actually The Sims. The Sims was one of the first games that really wanted me to push my video game knowledge and gaming and things like that to a whole new level. I remember I used to, as soon as the expansions came out, I would go out, I would get it. I would actually run out of um, hard drive space on my computer. So being new to video games at that point in my life, I was calling up the local uh, computer store saying, hey, I need more memory to put on, to have my games on. And the guy was like, uh, so I've got like four meg for a hundred dollars. Cause that's how we did. We didn't go in gigabytes back then. He thought I was talking about RAM, random access memory where I was talking about hard drive space memory, but I just, I need more memory. I need more memory because that's what the computer was telling me to do. But I used to play The Sims nonstop. I used to make all my friends on there. I made a whole bloody world with all my friends. And just when I couldn't be bothered, obviously looking after them anymore, I chucked them in the pool and removed the railing and killed them. Sorry, Sean, man, you had to go. Next up was Resident Evil. Now, Resident Evil actually combined two of my favourite things in the world. Horror movies and video games. It was just missing sports. But I suppose running from zombies can be considered as a sport, right? Now, Resident Evil, I didn't actually own at first. I actually played it with my cousin's husband at the time. Uh, and I was just like, wow, this game's amazing. So when I got home from holiday, went out and I bought it. And it consumed me. It was like... Because growing up, uh, me and my younger friends, we used to like stay up till like 12, 1 o'clock at night to wait for the, the latest Friday the 13th movie to get shown or, or Halloween or Freddy or whatever. So I really love getting scared in games. So Resident Evil was perfect for me. And just at that age where I was getting into PlayStation and getting into gaming and things like that, I couldn't have asked for anything more until Silent Hill came around. Next one, moving on to the Xbox generation of games, was Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Now, Knights of the Old Republic, it fed on to my love of Mass Effect. But if you want to talk about the base game that sort of got me into those styles of games, you've got to go with Knights of the Old Republic, the classic. It was the first like RPG game that I really got into. Uh, it was in the Star Wars universe, so what else could you really ask for? I'd never really got into sort of your RPG, your JRPGs and things like that. But this was a really, really great way to actually step into the world of the RPG worlds. And there wasn't a time that I didn't play it. Like, if I was waiting for my well, girlfriend at the time, now wife, uh, to come and pick us up and we were going out or something like that, or, or, or just I had plans. If I had a spare two to five minutes, I would jump on and I would play the, as much of that game. Just if it was just a... Beat a couple of enemies or have a conversation with somebody on it. That is how much that game engrossed me. And when the cliffhanger came, I was like, oh my god, this is the greatest game alive. Moving back to the PC. Now, I've still got this disc, of, I think it's at my mum's house, but Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike on the PC, Steam was coming out. This game was amazing. This was where I sort of first learnt about online gaming. Um, after that, you were sort of looking at the Jedi Knight 2 Outcast sort of mob that I used to play with. 
but really it embedded at Counter-Strike. Uh, I remember when I got Counter-Strike, I was watching it at a friend's house. And I'm like, I've just ordered, a, I'm going to order a PC. Because at that time in my life, I was actually working at a company that sold, I was a door-to-door -door salesman selling buddy computers and internet packages. Revolutionary. That job lasted six months. Uh, I'd actually ordered a custom-built PC and blah, blah, blah. And I was at my friends, I'm like, oh, it's going to come out, it's going to come out. Um, I'm getting my PC soon, I'm going to be able to afford it, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like looking at the specs, I'm like, Fred, Debo, is this enough? Is this enough? He's like, yeah, it'll be easy enough. And I'm like, oh, now I need to get internet, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so it really stressed me out, but I really wanted to get into this game. And when I do, I freaking loved every moment of that Counter-Strike game. Um, I haven't played it for ages, but it's sort of just talking to a couple of friends online now who are actually competitive Counter-Strike gamers. I've reinstalled it, so I'm going to start trying to get back into it because my old thimble hands aren't as quick as they used to be. And moving on next, certainly along the line of story-driven games and things like that, um, I want to mention Metal Gear Solid because I used to run home from work just to play that game because I was like, that was like where I got engrossed in an actual story into the game. Um, but really the one that sort of gave you that sort of open-ended multiple ending sort of things, you're going to talk about Fahrenheit. Now Fahrenheit, uh, obviously led onto your games like Heavy Rain, um, Beyond Two Souls, those sorts of games that I absolutely love. And to a point you've got obviously Until Dawn that sort of obviously took a bit of inspiration from that. But the, the Fahrenheit is obviously where it started. It was an adult storyline. Um, it, it just gave you these options. So if you failed this bit, then it took you a different way. And that was where really ga the, the thought of where gaming could actually take you entered my mind. Like, this is like a choose your own adventure book that I used to read when I was in primary school. And that got me really excited about games. And not to mention there was a bit of nookie nook in that game. Uh, and really that introduced me to soundtracks of games too. Like I think Santa Monica was a song from that game and I absolutely love that. I went to Napster or whatever it was at the time. I think it was LimeWire and just downloaded it and love that song. It's still on my Apple playlist until this day. Uh, that's how much I love that song. And it just brings back memories about the game. More into the current gen of games, um, Prince of Persia. Now there would be no Assassin's Creed without Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. Sands of Time, I remember I downloaded the game um, off of obviously a legal website, but I couldn't play it because my video card didn't have the shader type that you needed. And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, buy a new video card for a game. That's ridiculous. But then Silent Hill, the room needed that same shader. So I'm like, oh yeah, I can justify that. Yeah, I'm going to spend that money. And so then I finally got my first hand at Sands of Time. So this whole trilogy is going to get covered right here. Um, Sands of Time, just just the platforming and everything. And I talked about it in my um, like comfort gaming. It's just a beautiful flow of gaming. And the story was there. Uh, there was a whole fairer angle. And then it moved on to Warrior Within. And it just seemed like the, the series was going to be growing with its audience. Because it came out like a year or two later. And obviously the Prince had grown, it was a bit more of a darker tone of the game, and I was really looking forward to what they were going to do with the third one, but they sort of caved to uh, the consumers and dialed it back to sort of a bit of a difference between Sands, a minor difference between Sands of Time and Warrior Within. But I still loved uh, the Two Thrones just as much. Um, I've played through those games numerous of times, uh, and that just really invigorated my love of gaming to where it is now and obviously the assassin's creed series just it, it it's almost like a sequel for me uh with the prince of persia the the assassin's creed games uh but that's it for today guys i hope this gives you a bit more insight uh let it be known that i'm actually rocking a new microphone with my video today so i hope the audio is a lot more better and i just want to say thank you to all the followers i mean i've got 91 uh, yesterday's video of Shit I'll Never Play is actually the most successful one to date. Uh, as I'm speaking right now, I've got 51 views. So 51 views out of 91 subscribers is fantastic. And I want to say, I love you all from the bottom of Bez's heart. Uh, but guys, check me out tomorrow uh, for a day in this gamer's life. Just where I'll just talk about a few couple of things. But guys, 
Thank you again for all your support. You've inspired me now to get the microphone. So have yourself a great day, guys, and I will see you tomorrow.